Oh, mere mortalites, welcome back to another edition of the Mere Mortals in Motion. And we have a new phase for you. We've got powerlifting this time around. It's going to be 12 weeks in the powerlifting phase. But let me talk to you about what we're going to be discovering all throughout this particular one. Um, so I want to be talking about what is a phase, you know, why powerlifting, what the outcome is, how I'm going to be approaching it, the science or the rationale behind this as well, and you know, some of the equipment and how I'm going to be tracking it. So and then we'll summarize as well about how you can support me and we'll talk all things about Valley for Valley. But let's back it up. Now, firstly, if you've been tuning on to the Mere Mortals in Motion or at least the majority of the Mere Mortals podcast and the things that we talk about here, I actually went through and put together a, an annual plan around my training and I sort of dissected that down into big chunks of running, powerlifting, a few other different uh, methods and movements and styles across a whole year and I'm going to try and track, talk about them, present them out as I'm doing right now. If you want to go and have a look at the running phase, uh, I've concluded that uh, a few weeks ago. There was 12 weeks of running where the aim was plenty of minutes on the feet, uh, distance, not so much pace, not so much for a particular goal. And what we have here is the powerlifting one. So what I'm going to be trying to do here is for all the mere mortal lights out there, try to inform from the perspective of a mere mortal who really enjoys I guess, powerlifting and lifting in general, how I'm going to go about it, what the goal of that is, some of the equipment, how you might be able to actually uh, take that on board, maybe how you can help me. And so we'll go work through this together. That's why I want to see it. So uh, touching first on, you know, what is a phase? It's just the ability of breaking down things into a more periodized, uh, specific, actionable task. So Often when you put yourself together in a, I want to accomplish something, it's usually just really large when people look into particular things like this. Uh, if you have never lifted before, if you've never power lifted before, if you've barely squatted your own body weight to say, you know what, I'm going to achieve a 300 kilo squat or a 500 pound deadlift or insert whatever me units of measurements you want to be using here for lifting. It's, it's a little bit giant it's a, it's a huge leap to try and go from basically nothing to everything and it's not to say that you can't do that but you need to phase it out you need to evolve you need to progress you can go from that beginner intermediate advanced if you want to get to that mastery if you want to get to that sort of level over many 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 years or freak as some people call it like jeff nippard uh, etc and so you know you need to position yourself and place how you go about with the growth uh, and the continuation of lifting so for a phase for me I would put myself in the intermediary to advanced sort of level uh, when it comes to powerlifting in particular. I would have gone a bit of a shift left in terms of that when it comes to running. But for powerlifting, okay, I've done that for quite a few years. I've got a lot of passion for it. You know, I've lifted heavy before. I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I wouldn't say that I'm a master, nor will I be trying to teach you folks how to specifically lift. Go find someone who's way better than me and anyone here on the Mere Mortals podcast who's going to help you do that. But I know that for myself, going into a phased approach is going to be the best way for me to recover, get the best outcome that I'm uh, specifically looking for or the goal. And that's just going to be because I can uh, function with a very dedicated 12 weeks. So it could be eight weeks, it could be 10 weeks, but specifically we're looking at 12 weeks here. And I can really just laser focus on, okay, I know that for 12 weeks, I'm going to be focusing in on that specific modality of movement and other areas and you know i've talked about it before on the podcast around energy systems you know we're not going to be looking at the really long endurance aspect of it sure i'll run i'll do some zone two work but it isn't going to be the thing that i'm lasering in on it's not what my focus is going to be and if again i've got to pick on something i've got to optimize i'm going to optimize for the powerlifting moves as opposed to those other energy systems just how it is so look quickly on why powerlifting I love it. It's really enjoyable, to be frank with you. Uh, specifically, powerlifting, we're talking about bench pressing, squatting, deadlifting, uh, whether it's raw, whether it's equipped. I'll talk about my, my equipment in any case, but you can do it whichever way form you want. Really, you're trying to do the maximal amount uh, of weight moved across those three variations of movements, of exercises. And uh, it is split out, so specifically in the powerlifting uh, competitions. Now, I'm not doing this particular phase to compete. However, I'll talk about some of the baselining and PRs that I'm looking to do. It, if you're looking down that path, you can split out from a competitive perspective. The, also, the lifts between uh, the body weight that you're actually achieving it is. You can compare that across to others with things like a Wilkes score. So you, know, you can look into that if you uh, want to know a little bit more. But for me, 
uh, for powerlifting. It's just, I really do enjoy it. I, I love lifting heavy ass weights. I've done it all my life. I've done it for, you know, honestly, I say all my life, realistically, probably since I was 19 years old. And in amongst every training that I've done in those 12 odd years, probably the majority of it has been powerlifting in some way, shape, or form. Um, outcome. Now, in the running phase, it was, as I talked about earlier, minutes, kilometers down on the feet. I was trying to split it up and put a goal together. But it wasn't around, I'm going to get a specific pace. I'm going to hit this sort of distance every every single week and I've got to get that. For me, at the end of those 12 weeks, powerlifting, the aim here is, and I you know implore you, me and more lights out there, if you're doing something like this, put some numbers to it, especially for powerlifting, probably does help out. Also, a lot of the lifting and the training comes with percentages or RPE basis and you can really it's the, the more concrete, definitive way that you can see the progress. For me, I'm saying I want to increase by 10% my individual lift PRs on the, on the variations of a bench press, a squat, or a deadlift, or overall, the, the total across those three, I want to try and improve by 10%. Either or, I don't really care, but I want that 10% increase uh, either on the collective or in the individual. That's what I'm aiming for, and the particular plan that I've put together for myself is looking to do that. So speaking about that, the plan, the approach... Uh, always have a plan, get ready for it to be uh, punched in the face, but you need that to at least begin somewhere, aim for something and then start manipulating and playing with that with the reality of life. And that's that's one big piece that we do talk about in the mere mortals. You know, it's effective philosophy, it's effective planning. You have to plan something. I do agree with that. Uh, don't kid yourself though that at the end of 12 weeks, you'll hit everything exactly how you planned it. Look, if you do, power to you, kudos to you, well done. Honestly, it's almost never happened in my life. Maybe a couple of weeks here and there that were perfect, but it's never been perfect training. And that's just reality. So learn to live with that. Um, but going back to the approach, so 12 weeks and it's split up into uh, four different sections. There's the, the baseline, there's preparation work, there's accu accumulation work, and then peak work. And I'll get into specifically the baseline in this uh, episode and I'll talk about the rest over the preparation, accumulation, and the peak. Um, realistically though, and I'll actually uh, describe this specifically, what's the science or the rationale behind it? Well, the baseline phase, it's uh, a phase often used to assess your current level of strength and typically involves lower intensity and higher volume to prepare your body for the upcoming training demands. Self-explanatory. The preparation phase, as you transition from the baseline, the preparation phase may involve slightly decreased intensities and volumes. It's also where hypertrophy work is usually emphasized, laying a foundation for the heavier strength blocks to come. Nice. Then you've got the accumulation phase. This is where it's getting fun. Here, the focus on building a broad fitness base, addressing the weaknesses, promoting hypertrophy to increase work capacity. The intensity is lower than in the peaking phases, but the volume of work is slightly higher. And then you get into the peak. And here, the goal is to maximize a one rep max strength for competition or for pleasure. It involves practicing under competition conditions with an emphasis on high intensity to match competition demands or the demand of getting a one rep max. And whether you put a time domain or not, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, key things around the sort of planning, it's going to be progressive overload that you want to be putting together in whatever plan. Feel free to follow something like what I'm going to present to you over the next couple of weeks or figuring out your own. You can go on Google powerlifting cycles, powerlifting phases. There's a truckload of them. But in baseline, there's progressive overload where that's undulating reps, undulating sets, undulating weight. Your what you're really trying to do and what I'm trying to do over those 12 weeks is progressively overloading both the weight and my nervous system to actually handle that weight over enough weeks. Don't go and try and do a two-week phase, three-week phase where you just smash yourself as heavy as possible with as much weight if you have no preparatory, uh, preparatory um, cycling with it. You're going to get destroy in one way or another unless you can recover really really quickly aka you're young or you're on gear or something like that fantastic for me i'm a mere mortal light not happening um a couple of other things as well is just the reduced plateau and this comes in the form of just overall in in a training perspective um and, and in doing phases phasing things out and even within the breakdown of the phase here with the sections it just helps with the plateau so you're not hitting the same sets the same reps 
uh, all the time. And so you're not uh, stalling at both the genuine physical uh, stoppage of, okay, I can't go linearly past this particular point. Okay, if I'm squatting five by five at 100 kilos and I go, okay, well, I'm going to try and linearly continue this as much as possible. Maybe by week four, I'm going to stop. I just can't do any more weight. Maybe I've gotten up to 130 and that's it. It's not going any further and you start plateauing. This sort of variation, call it undulating, call it varying, whatever it may be, just lets you, you know, at least specifically here, drops down the, the amount of reps and the sets towards more intensity. But in whichever way you want to try and stimulate your body, both physically and mentally, to get past those plateaus. And of course, that means a fresh PR. I, I should make it quite clear as well. These PRs are not my lifetime PRs that I'm after. It's a more sort of specific in the moment, current one of age PRs. So with a looking at the baseline, I want to actually just touch on this. So baseline, what did I actually do to get myself ready? So that baseline was two weeks. In the first week, I just hit up bench press, squat, deadlift. I was trying to find out what's my one rep max. Awesome, noted it down. Once again, it's not hitting my goal. Uh, PRs, in fact, they're probably 20 to 30 percent lower on the bench press and uh, sorry, on the squat and the deadlift. On the bench press, I'm still fairly close, uh, which either means I'm still relatively weak or I've still continued to be quite strong. You know, your choice. But so I ended up doing that for one week, just setting up baseline. There wasn't any more specific power lift training. And then the second week was just completely off. For me, that just sort of uh, timed out at a particular period where I was traveling. I didn't train all that often. In fact, I just ran most of the time, but it was a good chance to just deload the central nervous system, let the joints have a little time to relax before the ensuing war with the weights that was going to come up onto it. And so that was great. So those two weeks is what the baseline was. And look, I, I say to you, be more or less, if you're going to do a powerlifting phase or anything in general, try to baseline yourself, get an idea of where you are to where you're going to go. Even if it is, you know, you don't even tracking to percentages, you just want to do it and see if you get stronger without even tracking the numbers. Still, I'd say have some sort of basis and perspective on where you've gone, uh, where you've come from, where you go, etc. Equipment for those who might be interested. So, you know, for powerlifting, you need a bench press. Yeah, you need a barbell. You need an ability to squat and ground and lots of weight to be able to do some deadlifting. That's basically it. Nothing more. I personally go to a CrossFit gym, CrossFit Torian. They've got a hell of a lot of other things in there as well. Not that I'm using all of it, but all the equipment that I could have. So if you go to the gym, amazing. You could probably do stuff like this from home. I use some uh, Under Armour Project Rock 6 shoes. They're awesome. Recently got them. Just easy fitting, nice and wide, flat, perfect for all of these sort of lifting that I've just been talking about. So look, to be honest, recommend them. I've also got some Reebok lifters. I use them sometimes for squats. Honestly, they hurt my toes. They're a little bit uh, thin. So would I recommend them for everyone? Ah, maybe not. If you really, really need that angle on the shoe for when you're squatting or heavy weight, then you know, perhaps get something like lifters or you know, at least try putting some plates underneath your feet if that's something that you want to uh, play around with. But to be honest, I have them. I don't use them all that often, but perhaps I'll use them for the really peak uh, squat sessions, intense sessions. Uh, the other ones as well, use some knee sleeves. Uh, SBD or equivalent. I use a training version of them, not the competitive version of them. There is a difference uh, in the tightness when you actually put them in. You know, competitive knee sleeves are almost to the level where you need another person to really help you jangle them on. They are close to a, a knee wrap, although not as tight. However, the training ones, you can get them on yourself. They're easier to slip in and out. And to be honest, it just that caressing of, of the kneecap that I love that at least feels like I'm, I'm being supported when I'm squatting um, quite heavy. That for me, personally, the difference between squatting with knee sleeves and not knee sleeves, uh, it's huge. Um, so I really do enjoy um, using them. Now, how will I be keeping track of all of this? How could you keep a track on something like this if you're doing it? Well, personally for me, I have this massive spreadsheet. I've talked about it before where I've got my my daily training schedule, which I sort of typed away, type away on a Sunday and I plan out for the rest of the week. So there's that, which I'll obviously do from a week to week basis, but I have a separate space where I've actually got the 12 weeks uh, of training for the powerlifting phase already kind of planned out. I've borrowed a couple of pieces from a few different places. I've used ChatGPT to kind of conglomerate it all together. And I've got a plan, which I've just talked about with baseline accumulating, um, peaking, and so I've just missed one. So it's baseline, preparation, accumulation, and peaking. And so 
when we get into the accumulation, the preparation and the peaking, I'll talk about them quite specifically there. So be on the lookout for that. But just so you know, at least personally, I have a plan of attack for those 12 weeks. So that's how I'm going to go and track it and then going on a day by day, week by week basis, looking at, okay, what am I lifting? What are the numbers? What are the reps? What are the percentages? Am I hitting them? Am I not? And then looking back, gathering some insights, is it going well or isn't it? With powerlifting, at least for me, now again, I said I'm probably intermediate to advanced. I know what numbers I can hit or can't hit from many, many years of training. If I saw something on the plan which was you know, really high percentage for high reps, I can probably put my hand up and go, yeah, I cannot do this. I know for sure that my body's not going to handle that. However, I can also see in the plan that I've put together, I go, it's achievable. This isn't... I'm not overreaching too much with the power lifting. And, and I guess that's just, that comes with knowing yourself and knowing your body and the repetition of doing something as opposed to not doing it, which I guess happened to me with running. I feel like I overreached versus what I thought I could do. So that's just what happens. But in tracking it with you, me and Mortal Lines at home, I'm going to be presenting out to you, as I've just talked about. Obviously, this is that, that's sort of the baseline, the preparation of how it is that I'm going to be doing the power lifting phase and the equipment and all that. But I'll talk about the, the preparatory, the accumulation, the peaking specifically. So I'm going to dissect them down to those three. I'm not going to go week by week like I did with running. I'm in fact going to do it by those subsections. Maybe there's going to be a collection more of insights and learnings that I might be able to present. There'll be, obviously, there'll be three weeks or four weeks worth of content of, of workouts. So maybe I'll be able to uh, synthesize it a little bit better than I had in the past. Who knows? We'll see. But it does help me at the very least to both internally track it. And I'm going to keep on doing this, whether I'm talking about it, me and more lights or not. I'm training, I'm doing things, I'm going to be doing it by phases. So there's no difference to that. But I'm going to try and present it out to people for, again, does it help people? Awesome. Does someone out there go, hey, you might be able to do this a little bit better. I've got a little bit more expertise in X. I've got, you know, catching background in Y. Maybe you could shift it up. Awesome. Let's do that. Uh, would you want me to post more of the actual sessions of training? Let me know. So, of course, there's some feedback in terms of presenting it out to people. Maybe someone would help me out with my form. In any case, that's how I'm going to try and keep track of it as well from an external perspective through the podcast here. Finally, if you do enjoy what I'm going to be talking about, the mere mortals in motion, you can support us through many ways. Obviously, commenting, sharing it with friends. Let me know if my lifts are good, whether you like kilograms of pounds, you American fiends out there. But you can also send through a boostergram. You can also send through a message which basically has some Satoshis attached to it. You can go to our supporters page on the meanmortalspodcast.com website to see how you can do that. There's plenty of apps out there that allow you to do that. Go and check them out. It's becoming easier and easier every day. And it's really something that we do truly appreciate. We talk about it in the Mere Mortals podcast main chat at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. So if you want to see those call outs as well, so I very much encourage you to do that. For now, me and Mortal Lights, that has been the baseline, the setup for the powerlifting phase. Man, am I much more excited about this than I was the running. I just enjoy it. So be on the lookout for a bit of fun, some videos, some training, and hopefully some goals getting smashed. Me and Mortal Lights, one out.